All right, now it's being recorded. Um, just restarting from the start, thanks, Daniel. Uh, welcome to the CalEx interim meeting co located with CalConnect at the Fast Mail headquarters in Philadelphia. Um, we have a bunch of remote people on here. I'm Bron, I'm one of your chairs. I'm just noting down the names of people as they come into the Zoom connection for Blue Sheets and of course the names of everyone here. I already have um, an affiliation, so I will publish that as a list of blue sheets. I've spoken to everyone except Ryan, and Ryan, I know you're with Twitch, so um, hopefully you can hear us all right. Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Awesome. Um, since this is an IACF meeting, it's under the conditions of the note well. Um, please check that up if you're not sure what it means. This is the agenda, which I just showed a second ago as well. Um, didn't have any feedback from anyone wanting to change anything, so let's get straight into it. Starting with the event pub, Mike. Um, basically, what it says there, I think um, I, I think the last version addresses um, most of the issues, except that one at the bottom. Uh, in a, in a uh, call we had about uh, 30 odd minutes ago, I, I, yeah. um, <clears throat> I realized that I need to change the location type value um, to align with the board and the chair's calendar and makes more sense anyway. So I've, I've done that in my current version is that would be version 16. And the only open issue I think is this one about URI usage very uh, raised a little time back. And um, the only thing that I don't know that this is the best place to to say much more than we say elsewhere, except follow the specs and be careful what you do with URIs. Um, and, um, but I do think it's a topic that needs to be dealt with in more detail than we could in, say, this spec. But there, there just doesn't seem to be an over, uh, a, a single document you can go to which deals with these, and it's not specific to this specification. It's uh, it's for anything that has uh, linked data in it, um, or, or binary data included in it. Um, and there's there's some you know extra thoughts on privacy and things which uh, need to be covered. But I, I think the best place is a separate document. So I guess that's a, a next step in the discussion. And, Cool. So presumably we will wait for 16 to be uploaded and then do a last call on six, version 16. Yeah, I can I can probably do that uh, unless there's any last minute last minute changes. Um, I can I can do it later. On the day. I, I already have it updated for the location type. You happy with that, Daniel? Doing a last call from this. We still can't hear you. Don't know what's wrong with your microphone. It's hard to get Zoom to pop up, I think. Cool, all right. Well, I'll throw it out and, and I'll get the area director to comment on it. I mean, the, the URI thing is something that can be dealt with in last call anyway. It's not, I don't think there's anything in the working group where we want to change it. It's more um, the rest of IETF's attitude to it. All right, next is JS Calendar, Robert. Um, yeah, so uh, we uh, submitted uh, version 19 of JS Calendar last week, um, and uh, in, in our opinion, uh, it is uh, now really ready for last call. We added uh, IANA registries and, uh, and uh, tables to, fi to fill the initial IANA uh, tables. Um, during the discussion that we had in, in at CalConnect just an hour ago, there, is, there are only 
very few and um, undisputed changes. So we think that the document is ready for last call. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, so I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to send a last. So it's going to be a working group last call, I guess. Yes. So I can start that immediately. And um, I'm going to write to Shefford. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to review during the last call um, the document. Okay. So, uh, the, so then the remaining changes that we just discussed an hour ago, we will add uh, in the document at the end of last call or? No, uh, no, no. Just add it uh, right now. And, yeah. um, and I'm going to send the last call. Okay. Perfect. So this, is, this is the items we discussed in the call earlier today, um, whether to make participant roles optional, a location type, the free busy status, and specification of new properties in IANA registry rather than requiring <laughs> RFC to care everything. Yeah. We can get the last few updates published by tomorrow, hopefully today. So yeah, I think let's start the last hopefully get this out. Cool. And the other thing that has been discussed was the um, full day event. Is that now solved? I think yes, that's so that's so that's 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 that hasn't changed since version 18 or 17. Yeah. We did that. And as far as I know, no one, everyone's happy with that. <coughs> Certainly no one's made objections that I've ever recently. <clears throat> okay, good. All right, anything else on this, Robert? Mm, no, um, probably. So for IANA registries, uh, should we start the uh, the register process at IANA during last call or after last call? That, I think that generally happens after last call. It goes to IANA and they they yeah. see the section that tells them what they need to do, and they then email you and say, "Here's what we're planning to do. Does this match?" Yeah. Okay. okay. So there there are actually two ways to do. The first one is. If you're really sure, we can do that this way. If you want to check with, with the INI if they are okay, um, just drop them an email to say, uh, this is the current INI section. Uh, are you okay with that? Cool. Okay. I guess that it doesn't hurt to do that. No. Yeah. Cool. All right, next is subscription upgrade, Mike. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think there are any significant changes that we've got, at least in, in the, the protocol or anything else, but in conversations that I had in the last couple of weeks, it was clear that the, the real benefit was for mobile clients. And, and so I, and it doesn't really seem like that in the, in the spec. So I think the major change is just to um, change the de description of it to, to emphasize where the savings are. And, and then we submit with that. Cool. So we'll do a work group last call on this. Uh, when do you expect that will be done by? It, I, I, apart from the couple of points we raised on the check, um, I, I think I can, I can at least get it done. Probably the next couple of days. Okay, that's going to give us, so far we've got three documents at the last call stage at the moment. And next is the alarm extension. Oh, okay, so um, I believe this is fairly close to being done uh, based on some conversations uh, earlier today with um, Robert on JS Calendar. Uh, I'm going to add back in uh, some text that was in, in the previous draft that allows the related to property to be used in the alarms, specifically, specifically for uh, student alarm that can relate back to the original alarm that was actually smoothed. Uh, one other issue that just popped up in my head, I believe in Montreal a year ago, there was a little bit of pushback on the proximity alarm trigger. Um, and 
privacy issue with potentially leaking uh, a user's geographic location. And I don't recall <coughs> where that was left. Um, I don't know if, if it was decided to remove that from the draft, even though it's deployed by Apple, or if I need to take this to the GeoPriv folks to see if they have any uh, language that we want to add or I any kind of pushback. Yeah, I want to take it in the language for that, like require that can only be used as a display alarm and it's doing on the device that's detecting the location. So it never actually needs, it's like the thing that's learning you is the only, is already knows where it is, but it's not sending that information anywhere. You know what I mean? Because that's actually what's happening with the Apple ones. As, as we, have, we said, that's why they've deployed already. Well, if you send the event to somebody else, with opinion, it's, it's just going to reveal that you might be close to a certain location at some time. Well, so, so yeah, that's the, the leakage would be certainly if you had like an email type alarm and if the client side to send an email, like you know, so it's like, I, I, that mm -hmm. would then send to someone else. But I, I, yeah, I think I don't think there is a privacy concern in the way it's currently being used and the way it's intended to be used. But we would probably just need language that's very clear. To restrict it to those use cases and to warn people not to allow it. You know, if you just had a system that automatically fired off whatever other types of alarms, it's it back that. So, yes. Okay. I, I will add text to that effect, and uh, whenever it gets to last call, we'll see if it passes the security area review. And also, the other thing is only allowing the user to set it for themselves. Yeah, just text, which most systems do already, but just explicitly putting that. Yes, okay. I think between those two, I would expect that to be sufficient for that matter. Does that sound reasonable to chairs? So, uh, two comments. So, the first one is that we should try to have explicit text that expose the problem and uh, wh why it, it does not happen. So, exactly the discussion we're having now. Okay. Uh, rather to to try to find some wordings that hide the problem. So, because that's going to pop up at some point. So, um, well, not a problem. I think, yeah, yeah. As, what we've discussed, putting that explicitly on paper to say, this is the problem, this is yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. To discuss the problem and how to mitigate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a, a way to move that forward. And um, yeah, I think it might worst um, not wait the last call to have the discussion. Um, so I, I'm going to try to to check that with the security directorate or directly finding some um, uh, GeoPrev folks because they are not, I mean, the GeoPrev uh, working group is not here anymore. So um, so it might, the, the might to, to have a review before the last call um, might be to go to the security directorate. Okay, cool. It sounds to me like this one we won't do last call in the in the immediate term, which is probably good because we already have three documents we're about to take for last call, and that's probably enough. Mm -hmm. um, for now, that's all I have, Mr. Cool. So, when do you plan to to have that updated? I will try to do that within the next uh, two weeks. Okay, right. So, basically, we're we we have. Um, one, two, three, four drafts that are expe expected to be moved. I mean, <laughs> pretty be baked. Um, what about the converting from um, N to iCal? I don't have a problem if, if the VLARM extensions um, waits for the other three to pass last call. Oh, no, me. I, I don't have any pro problem having multiple last calls. Okay. It's not um. It's not a. It's just some calls are going to be longer than the others. Um, so yeah, we might delay, but uh, it's going to be a, a short delay um, between those. Uh, um. So I mean, uh, one of the question I had is: um, Do we want to have a la um, last call for um, GS calendar and the um, conversion at the same time? Uh, I don't think it needs to like. The conversion is going to be an informational thing anyway, not a standard traffic one. Uh, it's only the, the JS calendar spec itself that's standard traffic because, so uh, I, I don't think we need to wait for that. Having said that, Robert, 
how much work is it to update the JS calendar by calendar conversion? Mm, it's been lagging uh, a bit behind, so I think it's at the moment reflecting okay. version 17, so I'd, I'd also rather prefer having them separate. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather we didn't hold up going to last fall on the JS calendar for that. I think it, it doesn't need to, and then we'll get that out as soon as we can afterwards, or even at the same time, because it's going to be quicker. He will be published later. Okay, good. Yep. Yep. Uh, so next up, we have the scheduling controls doc, which is me. Um, it expired, so I left it too long without updates. Um, I've gone through the feedback from the list and fixed the obvious mistakes in there. Um, but the open question of do we actually need the scheduled user address at all, um, and if so, should it be multiple value? I don't yet have an answer for. It. Um, I need to sit down and think about it in more detail. So um, I expect we'll keep pushing this one back. Um, I will do some more testing on it um, and also sit down and, and whiteboard all the scenarios that we can think of with Ken later this week um, and double check that we're happy with it. If we decide we don't need scheduled user address, then we'll just ditch it and the document will become very simple and just be a single scheduling control header, um, in which case I will Push it. Cool. Um, that is all leads. We're now on to Ryan and the maintenance notifications. Hello. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, I also have Shane with me as well and, and Todd. Uh, they, were, they were curious about how this was going to go. Uh, so this is my first time with IETF uh, at all. So I'm not really sure exactly what um, you guys are, are wanting me to talk about or, or what questions you need or, or whatever. Cool. If, is Todd there with you at the moment? Yeah. Todd. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, can I grab your name just for the, the notes? Uh, so my name's Todd Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R. Yep. And you're with Twitch. Awesome. That's yeah. what I mean. Cool. I've got Shane already. Oh, okay. Awesome. Sorry, sorry, Ryan. Go ahead. Um, did you want to present anything? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, I think I just had some general questions about the feedback I received from the initial draft. Yeah. So, so when we submitted this, uh, this has been a draft that's been floating around uh, that we've worked with a couple other people on, and we just we wanted to to see how you guys felt about it to kind of see if it was a good idea or if this was something that we could move forward with uh, one way or the other. Um, I know Twitch, Twitch and a lot of other peers that we work with have a pretty high demand for not uh, automating these maintenance notifications that we get. I mean, we get like thousands a year. So when we started doing this process, we wanted to bring it to the IETF and, and uh, see what you guys thought. So it sounded like from the initial feedback that, um, you know, the, kind of using the X, the X, the X name, properties was probably not the best approach. Uh, and what might be a better approach was to actually ask for an intro introduction of a new component. Um, that's kind of the feedback that, that I, that's how I took the feedback. Is that <laughs> accurate? I think Ken was providing a, a decent amount of feedback. Yeah, I, I think putting all these specific properties in its own new component makes the most sense. And we're, we're starting to take up uh, that direction with other drafts currently in, in the working group. Mm -hmm. But that, that's still the question of whether we should even, that, that whether they even need to create properties. I mean, these aren't calendaring properties. They're, they're notification properties. So we're redefining an existing set of data as, as I calendar properties. It doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. Which is why I suggested using structured data. Uh, I think I heard someone suggest you use structured data for, for this. Is that what I? Yeah, that's my. Okay. Well, okay. It, it was sort of made exactly for this kind of, of purpose that you, sure. you have some external. I mean, it, it, I absolutely agree with the idea of using I, I counter objects as as some way of transporting this because they're time related and, and all the rest of it. But um, 
if you use the structured data problems in the event pub spec, you could you could define your own schema and just refer to that and then, then embed the data inside that. Um, either you can just point at it or you can have a have the actual um, body of the thing in there. It could be JSON or, or XML or whatever is, is appropriate for what you're doing. And then you, you just retain control of the schema. Uh, you don't need to, if you add new properties, you're not going through the whole performance of, uh, of, of updating an RFC or anything else. You just update your own schema. Sure. Okay. I understood. Um, so our, our, the reason that we wanted to, to take this approach, at least, to, at least to get some ideas and opinions of others is we're trying to kind of make this fit into the whole industry. Um, there's a, you know, there's a lot of other people that, that kind of want to see this sort of, this sort of approach to, to help automate their, their notification parsing. So, uh, as far as maintaining a schema, if we, if we did that, we would, you're suggesting maintaining a public schema that everyone could, could reference. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then, then the, the control of that schema is, is yours. You can, you can update it any time you feel like it. And you have your own process for notifying people or tell them to switch to a different schema or, or whatever is appropriate. Um, and, and it's not it's not calendar data in there. It's, it's notification data for all for the purposes that you have. Sure. Um, so I, I just. I think that's a, a more flexible approach. It seems it makes a lot more sense to me to do it that way. So I guess from a question of wanting to maybe lock down the schema and make it so that it's no longer one organization, you could still publish a separate well, this, ITF yeah. document that's I mean, what I schema. Suggest, what at schema.org is, is the place where we initially looked at for, for some of these things for itineraries. But you could you could publish it at, at schema.org. Um, and, and then it's, it's public. Okay, so, so so your suggestion is to is to place this on schema.org and then maintain it there, correct? And then then then, then um, apart from the fact that using the, the, the new structured data property, there's there's no change needed to the iCamera specification. You've just got a regular um, iCamera event with this this uh, with this payload. Sure. Okay. Okay, I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. That's why, why we're going through this process. Uh, um, does anyone else have anything about that? Well, uh, yeah. I, oh, sorry, Dan, go ahead. Sorry. So one question I had about the structured data approach, and, and I'm, I'm kind of new to this iCal thing, so I'm not sure if this is covered somewhere, but is this something that's kind of widely supported already? You know, if we were to interact with any kind of iCalendar clients or anything like that? Is this something that would already be supported or is this something still in its own draft stage? It's, uh, well, obviously it's not widely supported. It's, it's still it's still a uh, draft stage at last call, but um, it, it, it's um, it's going to end up and say iCalendar J as uh, soon enough as I'll be implementing it there in, in libraries and I guess the other libraries will, will pick it up fairly quickly. Um, yeah. In terms of is it going to be compatible? It will round trip on any existing service yes. that's fine. Um, and it won't interrupt, it won't be compatible and the clients already know how to display it, but that would also be the case for any new properties. Okay. Yeah, have the same problem, yes. With, with any, any new properties you add, you have the same problems that uh, they, they wouldn't be supported in, in the sense that, that client libraries wouldn't recognize them. Got it. So, so it would be, equal amount of work either way, except with the structured data approach, we're more flexible in how we define the schema. Yeah. I mean, well, with the structured data approach, you need to implement one thing, and then, and then, then, the, then the, your own schema. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that feedback. Really do. Cool. So in terms of where we go with this from here, I guess the, the next step is for you to update the draft based on this feedback. Um, if you decide to go this way and. Well, yeah, I guess my next question would be if we go the structured data route, is there a, is there, is there a purpose in defining or creating an IETF document? Uh, I mean, is, is, would there be an IETF document that, that defines this, the schema or will we just host that, it on schema.org? That's, that's a point. There's no, there's no uh, If you're doing that, yeah, there's no, um, that there is actually no, no impact on the IETF. You yeah. Okay. Or scheme.org. Yeah. Okay. Th th that's what I was. Okay. I mean, I would like to see. Well, maybe that's where Carcanet can can step in because 
it, it, this is a, a, a very good usage of, of, counter, um, of, of the counter data. And so it would be good to um, just provide that as an entire use case. But this is another way of using counter data. I'd like people to know about that. As a, as, as a, as a, yeah, this, this is kind of again. So I, I've got two answers to your question. The first one would be it depends what the other vendors that want to use this want to see. Do they want to see a standards track document? Um, but to Mike's point, it might be nice to have this written up as a, as a, <laughs> a best current practices document. That okay. if, you're doing, if you're doing something similar to, to this, this is how we, we see it being implemented. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can uh, we can definitely take that feedback and, and make a determination from there on, on what we need to do to move forward. Of course, this raises another question uh, for Neil and Robert, which is, does JS Calendar have an equivalent place for putting structured data at the moment around tripping that, and do we need one? Well, that, that's the same as we have with a lot of the other extensions. Is I think we need to sit down and, and look at all the extensions that aren't currently covered and, and figure out how we're going to do that, that translation. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased we added the function to get started. It's a, it, this will be a relatively simple one to write. Uh, but we don't want to, I guess we don't want to hold the whole Much as I'd like yeah. to see all these things embedded in place kind of from the, from the beginning. That's why there's a registry. It doesn't all need to be there. It's just that we end up in the same situation where people have to get this pile of, of documents, virtually speaking. Uh, it's yeah. rather nice to have things in one document. Sure, so that's not the trade off. There's no service, so it's not going to happen. So maybe we can try and, and, and have um, an update with a number of, of um, extensions in one document. Sure, that's that way. That might be the yeah. also. So, so, yes, we need to do something with that. Locked. All right. Um, anything else we need to do on this? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, we'll we'll talk to our vendors and, and see uh, kind of what, what they would prefer in this area as well. And then um, I'll come back to you guys with any questions that we have. But it sounds like probably the easiest approach uh, so far is to maybe define and define something on schema and, and go from there. So we'll we'll work through it and I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, do stay in touch. And thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate the invite, really. This is super helpful for me. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Uh, just a comment. So uh, a clarification, maybe it's uh, at the ITF, we are different kind of RFCs. So um, it could be an informational on how you do that and you solve that problem. So that could be one way to go through also. So just to let you know. Okay. Okay. So maybe after we get the schema defined and, and yeah. this is working for us, we can write an informational document to kind of like a like a best practices, like Ken was saying, sort of. Yeah, or, sort of. It could okay. be. But uh, please, before you write, uh, just check with the working group uh, what the thought are, so you uh, don't do I, something. I, useless. I, I will. There, okay. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next thing, Vipo. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, this is a pretty complex document, uh, but it's, I think, I mean, we've already implemented it in a number of places, so it, it, it clearly works. Um, but as I said in the, in the <coughs> second thing there, I want to change, um, now that we've got a participant component, it makes more sense to use that than the vVoter thing, which we defined before we had um, a participant. So, I, I want to switch vVoter to being a participant. It's a, it's a relatively simple change, uh, only that it means uh, rather than defining a component, it shows how the component is updated for, for this. So, I'll, I'll get that done. Um, as I said, we, we want to try and get it out there before anybody decides that they really like the idea and want to implement it. Uh, but we want to implement it with participant. And the way the way it, the, the way the whole vpol thing is supposed to work is we have this sort of um, vpol uh, component with, with various bits and pieces defined, and then you have modes of working, and each mode could introduce extra. Um, 
properties or, or, or constraints or behaviors. And at the moment, I think the basic mode, which is pretty much say like, um, you know, the familiar doodle mode of working is a little entangled with the core of the specification. And I, I think what I do is, is move it out, make sure it's all completely separated as a, as a separate um, top level section is basic mode and then introduce some extra properties or constraints there if they need to. Uh, and that would that would actually provide a pattern for defining other other modes later on, but it also makes it clear what part of the stuff is really the core and which part is basic mode. Um, and the you know so our first target was basic mode, which is which is pretty much like doodle. Um, <clears throat> Reverse scheduling is is, um, is the kind of situation you get into where, for example, you're trying to make a, a doctor's appointment or whatever, and you um, you're the you're the person who's trying to make the appointment, but they're the people who own it, and there's nothing in the in the current ICAM or an ITIP specifications that allow you to do that. So Vpol actually provides a way that we can we can. We can standardize that process where you, you could you could um, ask for a, a a number of spare slots within within a given time period, say, and then select one of them, and then an event gets created with the the you say the doctor's office as the as the organizer, and you who started the whole process off as being the attendee. Um, and that's a very common scenario, which just isn't supported. In, in the standards, so VPOL provides a way to do it. So that's that's why we're very interested in that um, in that particular mode. So there are some other modes where we're interested in sign up and things like that. But I think in, in the interest of getting this thing out fairly quickly, so at least people can see what track we're heading. <coughs> I'll try. I'll probably just update the Vivo to to the participant. Um, do a little bit of cleanup and then resubmit re it so that at least uh, it's clear where, where we're headed. And I think I can do that in the next week or two. So um, I'm just wondering how many round trips will we have? Um... Sorry? How many round trips we will have um, using this uh, extension? That round trips. Yes. Yeah. For for this is for basic mode, it's 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 no worse off than a normal um, request reply in terms of scheduling. The the difference here being the well, I take that back. So there is an extra round trip in, in that the the first request the the organizer sends the poll with multiple options for let's say a meeting request. And then each attendee votes on those choices. And once the organizer has received all the votes, the actual meeting request goes out once, once the, the winner of the poll is selected. It actually, it actually provides a, a, a it, makes, it makes for a much more efficient uh, process for people. <laughs> it says that, have we lost them? No. no uh, my experience uh, Yeah. Um, I mean, this all goes back to, to the days when we, the, the Caltrans worked with Boeing to, to, um, to, to uh, solve some of the problems they had or try to solve some of the problems they had. And, and they were taking 21 hours per meeting to put together uh, their, their internal meetings they had with their contractors. So it, it's an enormously lengthy process. And, and Doodle has sort of solved that, but it's, it's, not, it's not integrated with, with um, I said, you know, everybody falls back on something like Doodle, and, and it works pretty well because there's sort of peer pressure. You put it out, you put it out there, people start to uh, put down their preferences, and, and the, the people who come later along feel that they sort of have to fall in line with what earlier people have done. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it tends to come down to, it tends to, to, to produce a result very quickly. So each each of those updates would involve a round trip, but it's um, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's not enormously expensive in that respect. It's not there's a vast amount of traffic. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean the, the 
I didn't want to. I just wanted to figure out if I got the scheme right. So there's an update mode um, for for for, um, for VPOL, which is fairly efficient. So um, we introduced some new ITIP methods to try and make this more efficient because the VPOL object itself is pretty sizable because it can have all the alternative um, you know meetings. So you can have a dozen meetings inside this thing. And, and you don't want to send that out every time. So there's a, there is an update method, which, which really just sends the, the current state of the votes. Uh, and so when somebody changes, uh, and, and it doesn't send all the votes either. So when somebody changes their vote, or, or, or actually votes on the thing, all that gets sent out is that vote to the, to the uh, other people. So it's, it's a relatively efficient process. Maybe we cut down the amount of data that goes back and forth. So, only, only occasionally will will uh, either the client will request a, a full refresh of the object, or, or I think I think at the very end we might actually send one out as a, a to summarize where we got to. <laughs> anyway, so what we're expecting from the working group is a new draft in the next. Few weeks. I just have to. I just have to get this thing updated, and to, I also have to change the name because I got the name wrong. Yes. So it will be Calix. It's still the new ATM Calix. Big ball zero zero. Yes. I've committed the mic to help with the uh, refactoring the text to split out the basic mode to its own section. But uh, how many work is needed for that one? Um, is it is it already implemented or? It's already implemented in okay. these three places. It's, they're not widely deployed. They're not widely it's still deployed. Still, it's going to be for testing purposes. Okay. But it's it's certainly a a a, a working uh, thing. I mean, I, I implemented it so that it was actually going to be used. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, there, there's three three or four implementations that was designed for proof of concept, and now they need to be updated to wherever the spec goes. Okay, so it's pretty mature. Yes, yes. As a fast I was planning to build something on it in the next little while, not immediately, but at some point. At some point. Yeah. It's your job to the office. And it's not, I mean, we have, uh, there has been some interest expressed elsewhere. Yeah. So I think. Um, Which is yeah, why we need to get the participant changed up yeah. very quickly so people know where we're going. Cool. Yeah, I mean that's good. Um, it's good to bring that to the to the ITF mailing list and um, um, CalConnect folks, please don't be <coughs> shy of providing feedbacks on that mailing list. That's going to be helpful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I calendar series. Again. Yes, you again, Mike. So, so I calendar series is, is something that was um, it, the thoughts came up because I mean I I got a a, a system which is heavily used by uh, universities and things for, for public events, and typically almost every event in some places is a recurring event. And and some of the some of the um, the previous uh, specifications and, and proposals and things that we've made have been how can we try to to uh, reduce <coughs> the load that is caused by especially very large uh, recurring events and many recurring events consist almost entirely of of um, uh, nice country, black. Um, Every, overrides. Every instance is is different, and you know even even in meetings it's like that. People put up a meeting, and then every every week they they change the agenda. So everything is an override, and if you try and retrieve that, um, you get this huge object there. So a series aligns very much with the, with the way people in libraries and places think about these these things. It's it's a uh, museums have these things, and it's it's a series of um, of 
events that are all part part of something, but each one is different. It has its own it has its own description. It may have its own embedded images and so on and so forth. So this is a way of of showing that this is something. These are linked. They they repeat over time, but they they look largely like inter, independent individual events. Um, so it's making use of, of the related to property to, to link these things together. It also deals with some of the issues with recurrences and what happens when you change the, the pattern on the recurrences. It has built into it the idea of, of um, linking these series together uh, for, for when these changes take place. And that's, that's not, you know, in recurrences, there's, there's, there are different solutions to that, but none of that's been standardized either. Um, and there's been um, a, 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 a fair amount of, of support for that in my people's been presented to. So I think it's, it would be good to, uh, to make it uh, more widely known. And uh, the, the spec itself uh, seems to be, we've gone through it on a couple of occasions, and the spec itself seems to be pretty solid at this stage. Um, so the server is generating the instances ahead. Of it can. That was part of the one of one of the things. There were there were a number of things I, I sort of rolled into this. One of them was that um, some while back the, the interest had been expressed in trying to have um, sort of they're not sort of self generating. Somebody's got to generate these things, but um, a way of saying how far, how many of these things do you generate, and how far ahead do you do so. And, and the, the interest there was in saying we have a, a meeting that takes place every week and you need to book a room for it. You need to fill out in advance where, uh, so you've got a room booking in place. But typically those room booking systems will, will, will say you can only book say a month in advance or, or whatever. So that, 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 this is an attempt to express and allow that you, you you would say generate one month's worth of these things in advance, and then something is responsible for um, for, for generating those. So, you know, in a client server type situation, it might be uh, something going on in the server. Uh, it's also you know a client could simply generate more when, it, when it's been treated with it. Is the um, series master a first instance? Was uh, Abstract and template instances, not. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just, but we don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to the same same problem we got with. Um, I think I did specify explicitly in the spec where that stood. I, I can't remember whether we said it actually is the first instance. But though even it doesn't even say that. Try to apply it for recurrences. But yeah, we don't want the same problem of uh, we have there. Is it or is it? Yeah, I'm just trying to see if like this is how, how much is it different to just having a series with related to events and the more pointing back to the initial ones. What, what would you define the kind of the split? Just what you and I have split stuff. Uh, if, well, but there's differences if the server is generating ones ahead of time for you. That's clearly different. That's adding extra functionality. Um, it's not just linking a series of events. It's also getting the server to create new ones in the series. Well, you, you can already link events with the way. So, but you need to, yeah, I mean, it is, I mean, you can already link events if anything can be supported. And there was nothing supports related to in any meaningful way. Uh, um, you can put them in there, but there's no client to link with it. For sure, but um, the client doesn't need new specs to do something with it. Really just no. But, but no, th this is, this is, yeah, this is using linking, but it's also using a uh, recurrent pattern. So you create these things. Yes, that that seems to be the key. That's that's it. And, and and it maps very closely to what uh, libraries, museums, and the rest do. Much more than than a recurrence does. Sure. So you need the ability to create these specifically on the server then to. Well, a client could create them. I mean, it's, that's. Oh, but then you've got if, if something's generating ahead of time. You, you might have two different clients that compete with each other to generate them. I agree. It obviously makes more I sense. I think you only really want to see that. We get, we get the same situation with scheduling, where you can 
you can tell that scheduling, you can Absolutely. specify yeah, the client. And letting the client do it. And and tell the light. So, <laughs> so, so if you've got a, a, a client server thing going, then clearly the server is the best place to do it. Yeah. And, and um, so that, that would be the assumption. That would be the preferred mode. But it, it doesn't prohibit a client from doing it. All right, so this is the series master. <coughs> I don't know why the same measure of code is not clear to me what that is. Wait, I don't know. It's the first one of the concurrents. I've lost it. I've lost it. Oh, big one. Yeah. Okay, that, I, that does probably need a little. Oh, that, that, those two sentences are, are conflicting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So it looks like maybe some uh, work is required. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think the general idea is interesting. Yeah. I, I would, yeah, this, this needs some more work. So what I was proposing here is that we do a call for adoption to yeah. adopt this as a, a piece of work for the working group. Uh, what do you think about that, Daniel? Does that seem like a, a good next step? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be ready to be adopted. I mean, um, I think uh, as long as we get some interest and enough people that is willing to work on, we can ship it as the, um, yes. we, we can have it as a zero zero version and then imp increase the number. Um, we've seen we go up to 19 <laughs> sometimes. <so. laughs> yeah. It's just we should not be. I mean, um, it, it's even better to see that uh, this is being actually discussed uh, on that mailing list. So I, I would not refrain from uh, proposing that um, for uh, adoption. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll do a call for adoption on that today. Did I submit it? Did I submit it? Uh, it's yeah, the, submit under your name. Uh, it's uh, but it's expired. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's the thing. I could submit the Calix version if, if we're going ahead with it. That would bring it back to life again. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll put I'll put out the call for adoption just in case anyone on the list objects to the whole idea of working on it. Um, and then yeah, submit a zero zero in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So next, we're going next. Uh, next, we've got any other business. Uh, let me just go back to sharing. Yeah, so, so hopefully by Singapore we've got the last school stuff's kind of end of the way that's last school. Yeah. We could put the end of the last school close just the end of the last school. Uh we just um, have the last call finish beforehand before unless that. there's any yeah. particular need. Um yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shut up notification for all doing this. All right. Um, is there any other upcoming work that people want this working group to do? Anything we should be planning for? I think that if we have a meeting in Singapore, it's going to be a good. Um, good timeline to have the work we we commit to to be achieved to yeah. so and i think it keep us on track so i'm not um, against having a, a, sh a small call um depending on the, which time zone uh, most of the people are going to be are you going to be in singapore brown yes i'll be there um, and okay so yeah i'll be there it's in it's in your neighborhood it's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> eight hour direct flight or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy. That's still a good Pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, cool. cool. There we go. We finished half an hour early. Half an hour. This was an hour and a half session. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Thanks, Rudy. And, and just for the meeting in Singapore, um, 
I mean, uh, we could do two two ways. Um, one, we could have a side meeting. I mean, if the schedule is better, depending on the time zone, I, I think uh, we have this kind of flexibility. So we can have that a side meeting or official meetings, depending on what is better for you guys. Yeah, well, we've already asked for an official time slot in at the ICF, so um, presumably we will we will hope that that comes up at a reasonable time. But yeah, that's uh, that's my. That's um, <laughs> <laughs> we never know. <laughs> um, regardless, there'll be a few people there. Cool. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for this work being done, and let's let's move that forward. Awesome. <clears throat> Kill off the recording. Thanks for reminding me, and see you in Singapore. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.